In the last few videos, we've been looking at Plotly that lets you make interactive um, maps using HTML widgets. Now we're going to move on to another one of the packages in the HTML widget suite. This one's called Plotly. Um, so this particular one is really working with a package from JavaScript um, that, that allows you to kind of interact with a number of different types of, of, of plots. So not just maps, but also scatter plots and things like that. Um, so it is connecting R to functionality outside of that. It's really allowing it to kind of write stuff in JavaScript. So when somebody opens it in a, in a browser, they can play around with it and kind of like interact some with that data and click on points to see which one it is, do that pop-up idea and pan and, and, and um, zoom in and zoom out and all those kinds of things we were looking at with Leaflet, but with a variety of different types of plots. Now again, because it is writing that out to JavaScript, it's really only going to work if you're either working with R, where you've got that viewer pane that's working as a browser, or if you um, write this out as to into HTML where somebody has a document they can open with a browser. Plotly, I think, is really nice too, I should mention, because um, it, it plays really nicely with ggplot. It really lets you take a lot of what you've learned with ggplot and very quickly and easily make it into something interactive if you're rendering out to HTML. So again, this is working with the plotly.js, which is the JavaScript um, library. Um, it's open source as well, and it's inside, it's, it, it's working on this framework of data-driven documents. It's called D3. That's very popular in JavaScript. There are two main ways that you can do this. Um, when you're working with it, there are a collection of functions that are kind of like um, specific to Plotly, the workhorse one. So plot underscore ly, that, that's kind of the main one that will make most of the non-map graphs. There's plot underscore geo and plot underscore uh, mapbacks, and those make maps with this. But you also can do ggplotly. This is kind of your second choice, and I think it's a great one if you're used to doing stuff with ggplot and you want to just get started with Plotly a little bit. So you can take something you've created in ggplot and then you can pass it into the ggplotly function and that will add some interactive elements on top of the ggplot uh, object that you've created. So we can look at an example again from World Cup. So I'll do the time by the shots. So if we go into R, that's in the Faraway package. And again, the data for that is World Cup. And then let's make sure we load plotly as well. And let's also load the Tidyverse. And if you don't have Plotly installed already, you would just do install that package as, as normal. All right, so we want to create first this ggplot object. I've named it kind of uncreatively just A here, but we can name it whatever we wanted. So let's see. Um, let's name it maybe shots time. All right, and we had time on the x-axis and then shots on the y-axis. So if we look at this, this is our classic GG plot, right? So we've got time here, we've got shots here, we've got all of our points. All we have to do with Plotly, with that GG Plotly, to make it interactive is to do GG Plotly, then with the name the name of that object we just created. So now we can do a few things with it. As we scroll over, it will give us the values for any of the aesthetics that we've mapped so far. So, so far we've mapped X to time and Y to shots, so it's giving us the time and the shots. We can also zoom in some if we want. So we can zoom in on this region, and then if we want to, we can pan around like this and look at these points. Um, you can go back and auto scale to get back to the original size. And then you can even, somebody could even um, take a picture of it scaled in at a certain point and save it as a PNG if they wanted to have that version of it for later. Now you can do all of your classic things that you might want to do with this. So you can do um, your color. Let's add that in here. So let's map color to the position, the player's position on the field. 
So you can see that's added. And since we've added that as an aesthetic, we're mapping. It also shows us that when we when we um, scroll our cursor over each of those points. We can do fastening as well. Say that we want to facet by team, and maybe let's just filter the to the top ten teams. Let me make sure I can remember which. One. Sorry, top four teams. change it this way actually. Let's move this out and pipe it in so that way we can do a few of these manipulations before we get it in. So let's filter. Actually I copied that whole thing I think yeah. Alright. Is there anything else that I did? Okay yeah we can move in the names if we wanted. We could actually use rare names to call in for this. Number equals name. Okay, so doing this so far, we're just working with the data so that we filter so we've only got the top four teams and then we've moved name in. Now, if we want to scroll over each point and be able to see the name, then what we can do is we can add that in as a grouping variable. So we have it as one of these aesthetics we're mapping. So even though we don't need the, the, the we don't need that mapping otherwise this way it will show up when we scroll over so let me show that part first and then we can do the fastening all right so you can see that we have the name of the player their position all of that and now we can do our fastening All right, and so now we've got a separate one of these small multiples for each of the teams, and we can get a lot of information about those points when we scroll over them. All right, there's some other nice things that you can do with the Plotly package too, and I'm just gonna give a little bit of a tour, and this is drawing on the examples that are in their vignettes. So you can read through the vignettes to, to get the full explanation for how all of these work as well. Um, but I wanted to show these because I think that, that they're really nice to know that they're out there. So um, there is a data set called U.S. Accidental Deaths. This gives monthly accidental deaths in the U.S. for 1973 to 1978. So that's a time series. If you use Plotly, this is using that other interface for it rather than the ggplotly. This is using plot underscore ly. For X, you can use the time from those deaths, and on Y, you can use the, the number of deaths. And then add lines and add a range slider. And what that does is when you scroll over, you can see the exact points. So this gives you the information for any point in time. But you can also tighten to a specific time range. And then if you want to, you can scroll through and kind of get a picture of that. So th this is a really interesting way to be able to explore time series through interactive functionality. You can also work with 3D scatter plots. So in this case, instead of just mapping to X and Y, you can also map to Z. And in this color, I'm mapping the position as well. With this plot underscore LY, you can see that I'm using that tilde in front of the columns that I'm referencing from the World Cup data set. And then in this case, it's adding markers for each of those points. So you can see that this gives a point where we've got time, shots, and passes. And then these actually allow you to kind of scroll around and explore them that way. And then if you want to see more information about a specific point, you can go on that. And that will give you, again, each of the levels that you've mapped an aesthetic to there. Um, you can play around with this some more. So if you have elevation information in a matrix format so that you've got like X and Y are the coordinates and then each of the values is the actual height, the elevation, you can pass that in directly. And one example data set that comes with R that lets you do that is the volcano data set. Um, if you look at that, so like one of these is the dimension for latitude and one for longitude and then each of these values actually in the cells are the elevation at that point. And so when you do that, if you have that format, that matrix format, you only need to pass in the Z value. 
and you, make, you can make a surface where it's connected all those points rather than just having them as separate points. And so you can see that that lets you kind of explore that surface as well. And again, when you scroll over, it gives you the exact values. So you can also use some mapping, do some mapping with this. Um, this example is using a data set, the us.cities, that comes in the maps package that should come with R. This gives some different cities in the US, ones with more than 40,000 people as of the time they created it. Um, and it's got information about the state, the population, latitude, longitude, and capital. And so you can pass that in if you want. In this case, again, we're doing plot underscore ly. And then you can add in markers and pop-up information, just like we were doing with Leaflet. So you can do this. I really think Leaflet's hard to beat when it comes to mapping, but it's nice to know this is out there too. And then this is what it looks like. So we've got that map as our background. And then you can see as you scroll over it, you can get, again, that kind of pop-up type information. Although in this case, you don't have to click on it. So I guess it's not as much pop-up. It's just um, kind of like a scroll over. So there's a lot more information about Plotly. There's actually a whole online book about it if you go to that link. Um, so you can find a lot more examples of how to work with different stuff with Plotly there if you want to explore that some more.